So I had a message the other week from a scratcher who goes by the handle Lullabus. And he told me he'd been scratching for three years and he still doesn't have a clue what the My Blocks section of the Scratch Tools palette is all about. Well, Lullabus, you're not alone. My Blocks, or Custom Blocks as they're also known, are one of the most mysterious areas of the Scratch interface for many Scratch users. All the other sections of the Scratch tool palette, sounds, motion, sensor blocks, etc., all have lots of example blocks to get you started. But when you navigate over to My Blocks, you're just faced with a big blank area of the screen and you wonder, what am I supposed to do with this? In the next couple of weeks, we'll be taking a closer look at the My Blocks palette and learn all the funky, cool things that you can do to up your coding game with help from these surprisingly powerful tools. Now, custom blocks, which live right down here at the bottom of the Scratch Blocks palette, really serve three different functions in the program. Number one, they help to keep you organized. Number two, they avoid having to do repetitive tasks over and over again, saving you some code. And thirdly, in some cases, they can make your code run dramatically faster. So I'm creating a very simple triangle drawing program here that's going to help to illustrate these points. To help me out, I've deployed the pen tool, which you can find down in the extensions menu at the bottom left. So it's not part of Scratch's regular tool set, but by clicking here on the pen button, we can get a whole bunch of new blocks that we can use to control how to draw on the screen. So uh, when I click the green flag, when the program starts, we're just going to erase any existing drawings that are on the screen. We'll make a little sound effect here called Squish Pop, which will kind of add a little uh, dramatic flair to the project. And we're just going to uh, initialize things here. We'll go to the middle of the screen and we'll point in direction 90, so we're facing the same way every time. And we're going to put our pencil down right down on the middle of the screen and move 50 pixels to the right. And you'll see when I click the green flag, that makes a horizontal blue line go across the screen exactly 50 pixels wide. So to make a triangle, any of you math wizards out there will know we have 360 degrees in a circle, which means that if we want to make a triangle, we have to bend one third of 360, which is 120 degrees each time we go around. So I'm going to turn 120 degrees and then move another 50 steps. And let's have a look at our progress here. There we go. And so now we've added a second leg to our triangle. And let's do the same thing one last time. We'll turn 120 degrees and move an additional 50 steps. And that closes off our triangle there. Beautiful. I'm going to turn an additional 120 degrees so that we don't, um, so that later on we'll be facing in the same direction again. Okay, well also at the end of drawing something, you want to put your pen up so that if you move your cursor around, it won't drag a line to the new spot where you're going to start drawing again. Okay, so uh, any sharp-eyed coders out there will already see that, that I've done stuff very inefficiently here. The first thing I want to do is I've repeated the same blocks of code here three times over again. So in our quest for efficiency, we're going to get rid of most of this stuff and put a repeat block down. So we're going to repeat this function three times. And let's get rid of these blocks here. So now all we have is a single iteration of move 50 steps and turn 120 degrees. All right, so you'll see I've actually made a space key here that will erase your screen off. And when I click the green flag, we get a triangle right away here. Beautiful. Okay, so the part of the code here that actually draws the triangle is this section right here. So what we're going to start doing now is drawing multiple triangles on the screen here. So I'm going to duplicate the triangle drawing part of the program as well as this location block here. So let's do a right click, duplicate. And now I'm going to send this new guy to a different spot. We'll send him to 100, 100. And when I click the green flag, you see we have two triangles here now. And I can do that one last time. And let's send them to minus 100 and minus 100. And that'll give us three triangles. Well, that's a lot of code. And again, very inefficient, right? So we can throw all of this in another loop again to be more efficient here. But I'm going to show you a much cooler way to do it using custom blocks. So let's get back down to the original part of the code here again. 
So we're going to isolate the part of the program that actually does the triangle drawing and we're going to put it into a custom block. So we're going to create a custom block that we can name make triangle. And remember how I said we can use custom blocks to organize things. And so this is how we're going to do it. We're going to take all the triangle drawing bits and put them all under one single block. So let's go ahead to the My Blocks palette and we'll click on that white button that says Make a Block. Now there's a bunch of options here that we'll talk about uh, in future episodes. Uh, but firstly, we're just going to go with the plain vanilla version of the custom block, which only has a name and doesn't really do a whole lot else. So I'm going to type the name of my custom block here, make triangle. There we go. And I'm going to click OK. And you'll see that now I have this big block here that says define make triangle. So underneath here, we have to put the code for how we make a triangle, which we've already isolated here. I'm going to plunk that there. And you'll see over on the left here where we have this big mysterious blank area, we now have a new pink block called make triangle. So I've made my own block that does its own thing here. Let's erase the screen here. And you'll see that when I click the make triangle block, it draws a triangle in the last place where I moved my blank sprite. So I can go to any spot on the screen here now. Let's use a go to block here. So actually we've already got this going here. We've got the go to zero zero. Let's go make triangle and we'll create our triangle in the center. Now I can create a new tri triangle at minus 100, mi one, minus 100 and again, instead of using a loop here, I can go make triangle again and now I have my two triangles. And I can do the same thing again one last time here. And you can see how I can save myself a little bit of trouble with this custom block. And I've also made it really easy to code. So there I've got my three triangles. So one of the nice things about doing this this way as compared to putting it all into one long block of code is I can change some of the parameters here. For example, if I want a slightly bigger triangle, I can move 75 steps. I only have to make the change in one spot here. And now, bang, I'm good to go. Or if I want to draw squares instead of triangles, I can tell it to turn 90 degrees. And now I've got a bunch of squares here, but I've only done it three times. So I actually have to uh, finish the last line of the square off if I wanted to do that, which would, I would have to do by repeating that loop four times instead of three, like so. There we go. Okay. So let's go back to our triangle code again, and we'll change that back to 120 degrees. So as you can see here, we've already accomplished two of our goals with this custom block. Our project is definitely more organized. Anyone coming into this project cold, if they were remixing it, for example, would be able to right away see that we were making triangles and how we were doing it and see that we were doing it three times. So that's really, really helpful if you're going to somebody else's code for sure to make it easier for other people. Secondly, we are avoiding repetition. There's a whole bunch of blocks here that we can just keep calling over and over again. Now to show you the third use of custom blocks, which is to make things run faster, I'm gonna have to draw a whole bunch more triangles. So let's get rid of this last couple of make triangle blocks. We're gonna get rid of this go to zero zero as well. And we're gonna send um, this triangle drawing scheme off to a random position. So we're gonna make this happen inside of a loop and make it draw many, many triangles. Let's start with 10 triangles here. Now this code isn't perfect because it's going to send, uh, occasionally send the triangle drawing to the edge of the screen where it's gonna bump into a wall and bounce off and it won't successfully make a triangle that way because um, Scratch won't draw off the edge of the screen. Let's see what happens here. Actually, yeah, so this one over on the right here, you can see didn't quite work out properly. We can fix that in the code, but for the purpose of this uh, demonstration, not really a problem. So we can draw a whole bunch of triangles here by making this loop uh, much higher. Let's draw 100 triangles. And you can see that we just have triangles like crazy going across the screen here. It takes quite a while though. So how long is this actually taking to draw? Let's ask Scratch to count. So I've created a little uh, block here inside Scratch the Cat, who I'm going to make visible now, that basically tells him to say the amount on the timer. The timer resets itself at the end of, um, at the beginning of every project. And so he's just going to say, this took this many seconds. I just have to call this time check by adding a little event block here. 
that says a broadcast time check. And I'm gonna have that happen at the very end of the project once we're done our little loop here. So let's run our triangle drawing program one more time here. And as you can see, it takes quite a while to go here. And in the second scratch will tell us, yes. So it took almost 10 seconds to draw 100 triangles here. Now you're not gonna want necessarily to, ha to have to watch these triangles being drawn every time, depending on what kind of a program you're running here. What's happening here is that there's an artificial speed limit set up in Scratch. Scratch is set to play animations at 30 frames every second and it switches automatically between frames of animation every time that it comes around a loop here. So what's happening here is every time we repeat this 100 loop here, we are waiting 1 30th of a second before we come around the loop and try it again. Now, custom blocks allow us to get around this limit by using an option that makes a Scratch do everything inside the single frame of animation. And to do that, when we're creating the block, we have to tick a special little checkbox at the bottom left here that's called Run Without Screen Refresh. When that is selected, then Scratch will do everything inside that custom block inside the same frame of animation, even if it's inside a loop. So this can really supercharge your program and get them running much, much more quickly. So let's go ahead and upgrade our existing custom block here by right clicking on it and selecting edit. We can uh, click run without screen refresh. And while we're in here, let's change make triangle to make triangles since we're making many triangles here. There we go. Now we're gonna have to, to get the benefits of this speed boost. We're gonna have to take this repeat 100 loop and contain it inside the custom block. So let's reconfigure our code a little bit so that we're drawing more than one triangle inside the code here. I'm gonna take a repeat 100 and put my entire triangle drawing routine inside here. I'm also going to put the go to random position here before I put my pen down. I'm going to switch to a new location a hundred times. That's it for the make triangles part down here under the green flag. We're going to tell it to make triangles. And then at the very end of that routine, we're going to broadcast our time check. Okay, so um, let's go ahead and test this and see how long that takes. Ready, set, go. Whoa, and you can see that took 0.078 seconds. Remarkably fast compared to the 10 seconds we were taking a minute ago. Let's try that again. 0.033, 0.034. Every once in a while it takes a little bit longer. 0.07 you can see here, and I'm not quite sure what that's all about. So if you do the math here, you can see that we're actually drawing these triangles a hundred times faster than we were the old fashioned way. We've broken through Scratch's speed limit and done something much more efficient, which is really great. You can really see that happen when we start to draw even more of these guys. Let's draw a thousand inside our make triangles routine here and see what that looks like. Again, almost instantly, 0.03 seconds. We have a ton of these here. Let's try even more. Let's try 10,000 and see what happens. And we have so many triangles, our screen is just full of blue, but Scratch was able to do it in even less time, 0.028 seconds. So just tremendous speed increases. I don't even wanna to try to see how long it would take Scratch to go 10,000 times around that loop. So uh, a very concrete illustration here of how you can dramatically speed up your programs by using this block. Now the one thing that I would caution you about using this run without screen refresh block is in some cases it actually does make your program run slower rather than faster. If you're running code that already has a delay built into it, for example, if there's a wait block in it, or if there's a play until done uh, block, for example, let's put a, that play squish pop until done right into the top of the loop here. And now this is gonna force the custom block to actually wait for the duration of the sound effect before it goes around the loop one more time. And that's just gonna ruin all of the efficiencies that we created inside of this custom block here. And as you can see, to drawing blocks very, very slowly at this point. 
So you definitely want to be careful about where you use this, but used properly can be a very, very powerful tool. I hope that sorted out some of the mystery and bafflement that's been surrounding custom blocks for you guys. Next week in part two, I'm gonna show you some of the more advanced features inside this custom blocks menu, including the ability to add inputs and labels. And that will really up your custom block game and have you coding like a pro. If you like what you see here, please like, subscribe, and leave me a comment. And uh, if you do make something with your new found skills at Custom Blocks, please share it with me. I'm at Mr. Tomek on Scratch. And whatever you make, if I like it, I will show it on my weekend live stream, Saturdays at 10 a.m. on YouTube.